Good day, y'all. This here's Paul. We're going to have another Sunday school lesson. <clears throat> I'm trying to get catched up around here. Uh, today's lesson is uh, Saul's disobedience under pressure, and the lesson text comes from uh, 1 Samuel 13, 5 through 14. Uh, the related scriptures are Numbers 18, 1 through 7, uh, 2 Chronicles 16, oh, excuse me, correction, 2 Chronicles 26, 16 through 21, Psalms 50, 7 through 15, Acts 13, 21 through 23. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read the scripture and then we're going to dive in a lesson here and try to get us a little word out of this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer and the opportunity to come before the throne of grace. And Lord God, we, we, we thank you that you are who you say you are. You're the God of Abraham. Ham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we and we're thankful, Lord, that what you say it is is just exactly what you do. And Lord, we just pray that you would open our hearts and minds to the Word, and Lord God, that we could just glean souls out of this. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Like I said, today's uh, text is uh, First Samuel thirteen five through fourteen. I always like to read the whole thing because I learned a long time ago under some tutelage from from, from great minds uh, who are really in tune with Scripture and it, with anything that you learn. The first rule they told me was that context always rules. And the second rule they taught me was if you're ever in doubt about that, go back to rule one. So context always rules. It never hurts to read and get an idea of where they're coming from so you don't jump in with both feet into something that you don't understand. So I'm going to read this, and then we're going we're gonna to talk about this. 1 Samuel 13, starting in verse 5, And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and and people as a sand which is on the seashore in multitude, and they came up and pitched in Michmash Mik eastward from Beth Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, that thou camest not within the days appointed, that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. And I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now... Thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded me. Now, the greatest lie that the devil ever told was he didn't exist. Therefore, if there ain't no devil, there can't be no hell, and if there ain't no hell, there is therefore not no heaven nor God. And they don't have to worry about what they do or about the disobedience that they go through, and there can't be no punishment because there ain't no good. Well, that's a lie right out of the pit of hell. 
Uh, if you get on over there in chapter 15, it's going to tell because they're going to ask Samuel which is better, sacrifice or obedience. And he's going to tell them obedience is better than sacrifice and that uh, rebellion is the same as witchcraft. <clears throat> Moving right along here. So, Saul, if you read the first part of this chapter, Saul gathered up 3,000 men, and he divided 2,000 on him with him, and he sent 1,000 with his son Jonathan. And Jonathan ran over there and attacked an outpost of the Philistines, and he got their dander up. He poked the lion in his own den. Well, here come all these Philistines running back over there, and the people run around like chickens with the head cut off, just like they're doing around here today. <clears throat> they, they not paying no attention, and they, and Saul was all set on what he could do, you know, what he could do, and all the battles that he had won, and he he done good for a couple years. And then he got where he's thinking more of himself than he ought to. I can relate to that. I've been down this road. Uh, but, you know, he decided he wasn't going to depend on God. He was going to depend on himself. And all the people was a scatter. And they, was, they had done decided that a good run was better than a bad stand. So <clears throat> they decided they going to take off. And they was running to the four corners there. Bushes and, and it says caves and... Uh, and, and even they even crossed the River Jordan back over there to Gad and Gilead. Uh, so Saul got to worrying. Samuel told him he'd be there in seven days. Well, you don't ever know what held Samuel up. It don't ever see. But he wasn't there just when he was supposed to be. And Saul said, "Well, I'm going. I'm going to sacrifice." So the Lord's pleased with with me so when I go into battle here I can win but it was all a farce see God was doing all the winning Saul was just taking the credit for it he even took the credit for uh, his son Jonathan running over there and attacking them Philistines outpost and whooping them all see he got the credit for that too but see he wasn't giving God the credit which you know I've been there. I know how that goes. So he tells them, and then about the time he gets done uh, doing the sacrifice, here comes Samuel. Samuel says, what in the world have you done? I told you I'd make a sacrifice when I got here. Wait on me. Wait on the Lord. You have to wait on the Lord. I, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times that I have got it in my head that something had to be done at this this point in time, and, and even with all my trying, it, there was no way it was going to be done. God said in Isaiah 55 that his time is not the same as our time, and his ways are higher than our ways. And thank God for that. Now, I know what it is like. That if I can just get this done, if I can just do this, and, and I'm trying to push my agenda, you know, without listening to the Lord. If I can't do it with him, I'm sure not going to do it without him. And just remember, the battle is the Lord's. You just have to let him do it, you know. I mean, I know, uh, I, I know, I, I've been there. I've been on both sides of it, and I've done it both ways. I know I you can hear me say that a lot, but it's true. I have done it both ways. I have tried to do it without the Lord, but it was all like, <laughs> like Solomon said, all his vanity, you know. Uh, Read Ecclesiastes sometime. Well, that's all for today. I hope y'all get something out of this. And remember, you can't do it with him. You sure ain't going to do it without the Lord. Wait on the Lord. 
he he he's never away from you. Y'all have a good day. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lesson today, and I pray, Lord God, that it it meets someone in their heart. And Lord God, that uh, uh, somebody gleans something from this and understands about the relationship that they can have with you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.